hello guys welcome back to my channel thank you for always stopping by liking commenting and subscribing for the new ones don't forget to like comment subscribe turn on notification bell so that you'll be notified when i drop the next episode on i do don't forget that this is fate is showing on mimi Nolly tv stay tuned zoya is shocked to see raj fear she asks what he's doing there he says that he was concerned for her as she didn't speak his calls Zoya asks him not to take care of her as there are other there are already enough people for that and asks him to leave as they are in the middle of a function. But he forcefully takes her inside the room and locks it. Zoya is shocked and tense and asks what the problem is. He says not to be scared as he can't talk in front of the guests who have come. Zoya begins to go saying that she doesn't want to talk to him, but he stops her and reminds how he had helped her. Zoya says so what? He says that she told that they are friends. She says that he is mistaken and they are not friends. That he is crossing his limits and that he should maintain his distance. He starts progressing towards her, asking if she's trying to avoid him. She is tensed. As she tries to flee, he doesn't let her and says that she is not returning the favor for helping her that day. She says that she isn't that type of girl. He says that he knows such type of girls like her who go alone on stranded roads and smile and talk to boys for an ulterior motive. He says that they both want the same thing and that's casual intimacy and says that she might be denied but she also wants it. He progresses towards her lustily. She stands thinking of a way out. He says that there is nothing to be scared of. She uses her brain and quietly rests her hand on the table and she manages to say that anyone can see them here. Rajvi is happy that they are on the same page. He says that they should leave them. She says that they should go alone, individually, so as not to be seen. He says that he would go after her, but she says that she has to plan a safe way to get him in, and hence, she would go out and make arrangements. She begins to go. He stops her and says that it's good that she stopped shying at as it's better to keep things simple between them. She agrees and asks that they shall meet outside. Outside, Asad is tense when he can't see Zoya. Najma asks if he's looking for Zoya. When he nods, she says that Zoya has gone to keep the gift and soon would come. Asad is still tensed. When Rajve comes down, he finds the entire guest standing before him, accusingly looking at him, and then Asad confronts him with Zoya coming from behind him. I'm facing Rajvi finally. Rajvi is confused and asks what's all this. Zoya asks him not to address her as dear Zoya again and asks why he's shot now. Zoya scolds Rajvi for considering girls as a public property and every fine girl is considered loose. She says that they have shamed the name of Indian girls and the girls of India is at India and safe anymore. She says that for guys like him, the girls are kept inside on the name of safety. Asad says this. She says that for guys like him, people keep their girls confined and not allowed to have a normal life. She says that they, they instead of girls, should be changed, chained as they are the culprits. And if a girl says no, then that means no only. Rajra says that she teases him alone and in public looks away from doing so. Asad comes and warns him that he hasn't done anything and there is still a way out for him to live safe and sound. But she stops Asad. She says that that day he had helped her and given a, her a lift and today she wants to repeat back. She slaps him tight on the face as thanks. Then slaps her again for all the girls who are even teased by creeps like him. She asks him to get out before other girls too do the same thing to him. He leaves while all the guests clap for her and Asad looks at her admiringly pleasing Zoya. Badibi asks Nozat what's wrong when she finds her stealthily looking inside. She informs someone on the phone that he has come. Ayan enters the room to find Badibi writing in pain. She says that she is in pain and asks him to get a balm. She tells that the balm is in the store and to get it from there. Ayan is surprised but Badibi sends him to the storeroom. After he goes, Badibi is amused. Ayan goes to the storeroom and finds it completely lit with candles and romantically set. He is perplexed and all the more shocked when he finds Umera 
walking up to him. He says that he was coming for the palm and Hesley tries to leave and begins to go, but finds the door locked when she tells him that Nozat has locked it from outside. He asks why she did that. He is confused when she comes to him and holds his hands and says that she had told her to do so. He is all the more confused and quietens him by placing her hand on his mouth. She hugs him, shocking the wit out of him. She breaks into poetry. He is tensed. She says that she knows how much he has loved and cared for her so much so that even she didn't do it for him. She says that she's foolish and has hurt him badly. Humera apologizes to Ayan for being so foolish and asks if he won't forgive her. Ayan is overwhelmed and hugged her tightly. She too embraces him. He wipes the tears being overwhelmed. Zoya comes into Asad's room and he asks her if she's okay. She nods. Asad compliments her on her bravery. Zoya says that Asad was right in thinking that Rajvi isn't a nice guy. Asad says that she too was right and can take her own decisions. As Zoya gets very happy, he silences her saying that that doesn't mean she can act irresponsible and do whatever she wants, but finally says that she can do what she wants. He warns her that he won't ever talk to her if she goes without informing him. Zoya asks if he won't ever mend. Asad says never. They hug each other. Humera too realizes their love. In Asad's room, as Zoya enters, Asad takes her for a while. Asad and Zoya enter into a romantic dance number. Both hug each other in the end, while Ayan and Humera too in their room have a passionate embrace. The next morning, while a person is doing the preparation in the house, Asad and Zoya get into a fight on the placement of the antifart. Najma tries to stop but they aggravate all the more and Najma goes to call Dyocha to put an end to it. Zoya asks Asad about his field fifth witch. When Asad pretends ignorant, Zoya scoldingly asks him what's there that he wants her to fulfill. Asad asks her to stop scaring him. He says that there was one but she can't fulfill it. Dyocha is looking at Rashid's picture which Najma and remembers his words regarding Najma's marriage. Najma sees Dilchad lamenting that even though their daughter is getting married, Rashid won't be there to see it. She thinks if she hasn't forgotten him all the, at all and misses him so badly, she leaves thinking what she can do. As Zoya asks, asks her to tell the wish she might be able to fulfill it. He says that when he was young, he expected Rashid the father to come and give him a gift, but he never came. He says that she can't fulfill this and it doesn't matter to him anymore. Zoya thinks and says that he might not express it, but he wants it to be fulfilled. She wonders what she can do to make that happen. Asad comes and asks Dilchad where Najma is. Dilchad tells that the two girls must have gone shopping for their marriage. She asks how he's feeling and if he's happy. He says that he is and asks about her and silences her. But then she says that she is the happiest mother in the world. Asad asks why her eyes are saying otherwise. Dilchard asks what. He says that she seems troubled about something. She says that she's concerned for her daughter's marriage. They both think that Najma has grown so much in such a less span of time. They both get emotional. Ayan finds Mera dressed, dishevelled, and breaks into laughter, asking what happened. She says that she had forgotten his birthday. He asks if she's punishing herself for that. He wipes something around her lips. She asks if he spent it and he teases her saying that he spent it in her search. She says that she would mend the birthday party for him once again and in her room and has planned a surprise for him. She takes a blindfolded Ayan to their room where he is getting impatient. She finally reveals her surprise which is a birthday cake for him on which is written her proposal, Will you marry me? He looks up at her overwhelmingly. She says that she doesn't mind being un unabashed for his love. She asks him to blow the candles and make a wish if he thinks it's a yes and if it's a no. But before she can finish the sentence, Ayan silences her saying that there won't ever be a no between them. When Rashid is thinking about Najma and Dilchad, Shirin comes showing the ring and what she has selected for Farhan. The girls too come. Badibi is about to place the heirloom bangles on Nikat's hand when Nozrat asks for hers. 
Shirin says that they are for the eldest daughter. Nozad says that means ideally Najma should get it as she's the eldest. Shirin silences her. Badibi says that they belong to Najma, but God has separated the family so apart that neither can this go there nor can she come there to receive it. Rashid is shocked to see Najma at their door, and all are startled too. Ayan is about to cut the cake when Nozat tells them about Najma's arrival, and they all rush out, leaving the cake on court. Outside, the entire family is surprised when Najma invites them for her marriage, asking them to... Forget the animosity and be one big family again. She says that she could feel very good and their joy shall double if they too participate in the function. All are speechless, but Razia compliments her effort, but says that the roots of the animosity are too deep and hence it can't be bro broken at once. Rashid says that they would have to start someday, and Johnny begins with one small step. Razia agrees, but I again says that if they had to invite, then some elderly person should have come and the child shouldn't have sent Najma instead of herself and maybe this is a trap. Ayan asks her not to talk rubbish. But B calls Najma and says that they would come for her marriage. Overjoying Najma. When Zoya breaks her scooty on the road, seeing a red light, she's surprised when the Pierre Baba blesses her. He's asked, he asks that it seems that she's going to enter into a very important phase of life. Zoya says that it's actually the truth and tomorrow is her marriage. But he confuses her saying that God knows what God has kept in her reserve for tomorrow. When every next second is uncertain. He asks her to accept whatever God gives tomorrow and be happy in it. He blesses her to be happy and leaves. She rebukes Paddy B as to how she can even think of going to Najma's marriage after what happened to Nikat. Ayan tries to speak but Shirin silences him and taunts Najma. Najma is hot. Shirin refuses point black that they won't be able to come to her marriage. Nikat surprises them by saying that they would come. She explains it to Shirin also to let her talk. She goes to N Najma and says that she thanks Najma for, for taking the first step. Nikat makes Najma wear the hair loom bangle while she's overwhelmed saying that she is the rightful owner for this. All others are surprised at this gesture. Najma thanks her saying that she didn't know whether she was right or wrong coming here but now she knows that she is right. She's about to leave when she's shocked and the others are, too are surprised to see her sinner standing at the door teasing that Asad's sister is here. Najma tells the reason for her visit. She says that due to her, the relations between the two families are improving. After she leaves, Hasina pretends to be surprised that they would go. Rashid asks if she wouldn't have invited them. She says that she came here for the invitation and to make him see Fahan. All waiting at suspicion as Fahan makes his entry. He comes and greets all. As they sit alone, Nikat tries to say everything about her past, but Fahan says that he already knows true Imran and has seen her. She asks if he's still ready for the marriage. He says that she should be answering this. After he is gone, all ask her how she likes him. Ayan asks her to take more time, and but she says that he's a genuine person. Ayan is reminded of the kick by Humaira and he leaves citing an urgent walk. Humaira too leaves in tow while Nozat teases her. They both come to their room but find that the cake is spoiled because of the cat that came in through the window. She is distraught that her question was unanswered and cites it as bad luck. Ayan composes her saying that they would make a cake again. She says that they won't be able to recreate this moment that she has already dreamt and imagined him saying yes. Ayan hugs and consoles her. Imran comes back to Asad's house placing a demand for bangles that Hasina has sent for. Ducha doesn't express her displeasure and readily agrees to do so. Imran leaves after Asad sees him to be patient when he asks about Najma. Outside, Imran sees Tanvi and is tensed. He takes her aside and asks what she's doing here. She says that she came here to get the money. Imran asks for some time. She says that he has until evening to give it to her or else. Imran is tensed. While Asad is very conscious with the preparations, Duchat says that everything 
would happen all right and that it's in their destiny to have some happiness now and they would get their due share. Asad looks on. When Najma returns home, Asad calls Najma that she should have told him before going there. She says that he wouldn't have allowed her. He reminds her what Dilchard went through for that man. She tells her Dilchard misses him badly and hence she went there and tells the morning incident. Asad is tensed. She says that if he still feels that she made a mistake then, she would refuse her father to come on her marriage. He says that she isn't wrong and hugs her tightly while Dilchard is emotional, seeing them from a distance. Zoya receives Rashid who has come in in the car and apologizes for calling him at such short notice. She tells him the reason regarding her sad wish. She stands to see him going away from her, tends himself. He comes back with a box to review many gifts. She is surprised to see this and asks how he arranged all this so fast. Rashid tells Zoya that if a son was waiting for his father on his birthday, then the father was also waiting to wish his son. Zoya is tense to hear this. He says that he couldn't get the courage to give it to Asad. Zoya thanks him profusely for this and tells that Asad would be very happy. He too thanks her, saying that she can't be called friend, but a bahu now. She smiles at him. At the door, Zoya is shocked to see Imran and Tanvi together behind the bushes, where he gives her some money and she forcefully hugs him. Zoya seeing this disbalances from the scooty and drops the gift box given by Rashid. When she gets back again, she doesn't see anyone there. She wonders if actually Imran and Tanvi were together. She looks, looks at the box and finds that the gifts are broken and is distraught. Zoya shows her the gift to Asad, laid out in his room. She apologizes that she is to be blamed for this and bearing one gift, all others were broken. He looks at them tensely. Both are sad at their efforts to please their would-be husbands going into vain. Okay guys, thank you for watching today's episode on I Do. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe and stay tuned for more updates. Bye.